We're going to hear it especially quoted this Christmas. O thou Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judea, yet out of thee will come one to rule the house of David. Do you know that in that prophecy, that they actually found the name Yeshua spelled out at equal letter intervals? Jesus is the one who will be born in the city of David, but also the name Mary was spelled out. Do you know that in the book of Ruth, which is the ancestry of King David and of Jesus, every five letters it spells out Yeshua in chapter 1, verse 1. I want you to get a hold of your own copy of the signature of God. And when you get a Hebrew-English Bible, you will be able to verify this for yourself. You see, we want you to get a hold of this material because I believe it will convince you that Jesus is the Son of God and that you need to accept Him as your Savior. This Bible claims to be the Word of God. Jesus himself said, Verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or one tittle of the law will pass away. In other words, God's saying that he inspired every single word, every single letter. Well, what does the Bible say about salvation? Because if the Bible's true, and if there is a God, and if you and I have a soul, and the Bible says we do, then it obviously will matter what God has to say about our eternal destiny. The Bible says he created us with a soul. And that soul is someday going to spend eternity at the end of this life in one of two places. It's either going to be heaven or hell. Why would God send someone to hell? Because the choices that we make, our own personal choice, is either to accept Christ and his holiness and his forgiveness of our sins, or it's to reject it. If we freely choose to reject God's forgiveness, if we choose to be our own God, if we choose to hold on to our sin, even at the cost of heaven, then God can do nothing for us. You see, God can't change the rules and allow us into heaven in our unrepentant condition. That would not make heaven for you. It would make of that corner of heaven where you intruded, it would be a little corner of hell. You would not even enjoy heaven unless God changed your heart by your repentance. You see, God can't change the rules. He cannot break them. His eternal holy nature is such that he created heaven as holy. And only those that are holy can go there. Not in your personal holiness, because none of us are without sin. All of us are sinners. But those that accept that we are sinners and believe that God died on the cross, Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago for our sins, know that if we will confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. That means that God can wipe the slate clean, that he can bury our sins, the Bible says, in the sea of his forgetfulness, that you can be as clean as the day you were born. Here's what the Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, this religious leader, Nicodemus, came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. This phrase, born again, has been bandied about. You've even seen it in commercials. But it means to be spiritually reborn. You see, all of us have been rebels against God. God wants to give you a new heart. And here's what the Bible says further in that verse. It says in chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. You say, the wrath of God? Why would God have wrath or anger towards sin? Think about it. God, in His holiness, created you and I to be obedient, to enjoy the Garden of Eden and all His presence. We've all rebelled against Him. Just like Adam and Eve, every one of us has chosen to be sinful rebels. We've walked away from God all our life. Then God sent His Holy Son, Jesus, to bring us back to God through His death on the cross. We all crucified Him. And the vast majority of humanity throughout history has rejected His salvation. The wrath of God because we have chosen to walk away from God, then we have chosen to go to hell forever. Milton, in his poem, Paradise Lost, said that the choice of every lost soul is this, that they would rather reign in hell than serve God in heaven. He said, ultimately, every choice is this. 
either in the end, you will say to God, Thy will be done in my life. Or God will say to you, Thy will be done in your life. Someone's going to be God. The consequences are eternal. The decision you make in time have eternal consequences. The reason we've put this series on, The Signature of God, is not just to academically prove by scientific evidence that this is the Word of God, but rather that we might introduce you to the God who inspired the writers of the Bible so that God could reconcile you to Him, that He could introduce you to a life of joy eternal. You see, God doesn't want you to go to hell. God doesn't want anyone to go. That's why He loved us so much He sent His Son. But the decision is yours, to accept or to reject. That's the most important decision you'll ever make. You've been watching tonight. Are found in the New Testament from Matthew all the way to Revelation. Some incredible codes about Jesus. We looked at 19 times the name Jesus in Greek, Jesus, appears at very low skip distances, like every five letters or every eight letters. And 17 of the 19 times we found it at low skip distances, these were what I call slam dunk powerful verses about Jesus, such as when Jesus says, Who do men say that I am? And Peter says, Thou art the Christ. He says, Follow me. Or the lowest skip distance was found in 1 John 5.13. It says, You must believe in the name of the Son of God. And Jesus' name, Jesus, is every five letters right beginning and ending inside that verse. You know, I'm really thrilled that uh, Christian Communications of Chicagoland, Channel 38, worked with me in producing this powerful documentary. And I just hope Christians around America will use this to reach their neighbors, their friends when they come over and to show them maybe over a couple of nights this information because everything we believe and hope for is based on whether we can trust the Bible and I believe the evidence is powerful. We can trust the Bible and trust Jesus Christ. It is powerful, it is convincing and uh, I come up with all sorts of ideas like I said in the beginning of the program tonight uh, kids doing a thesis on this, students doing a thesis on this book or even taking this uh, film to school and playing segments, but I'm I'm quick and two Bible study groups could play this. Um, it's it's very powerful and it's it's so needed right now in this day of many voices, many doctrines, seducing spirits. We need to know, and you know what God wants us to know. Yes, we need to get back to the Bible. Our beliefs, our practices, our experiences of Christians need to be based on the Word of God. We'll never be stronger than our daily walk and our daily reading and study of the Word of God and our prayer life with God's Holy Spirit. And so that's what needs to be focused on, back to the Word of God, and we will stand in the day of trouble. So powerful. What God, what God wants to do in this time, I believe, is He wants to change the world yes. with the revelation of His Son. And His Son, of course, is the Word of God. The Word of God was made flesh and dwelt among men and uh, this is so powerful and so moving and and right now again let me just say you you need to get the book the signature of god you need to get this film the signature of god you can uh, write to grant jeffrey's ministries or you can go to your local bookstore but you need to pick this up because it will make a difference in your life and i i'm looking for life changing material that's what i need i'm i'm tired of all the stuff that beats around the bush i want to know who God is. I know him experientially, but I want to know and I want to be able to explain him to others. And you can do so. Uh, Grant, you finished this uh, documentary tonight with a challenge. Yes. An appeal. Uh, if you would right now, I want you to make an appeal to, the, to a person watching this program right now. Uh, let's bring it down. Let's break okay. it down and let's give a chance. Well, if you're listening tonight and you would agree, the evidence is in. And the evidence is powerful that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and is our Savior. Would you pray this short prayer with me? And if you are sincere, God will hear your prayer and your life and eternity will be changed. Pray after me. Jesus Christ, I believe that you are the Son of God. I've considered the evidence and I know that you died on the cross 2,000 years ago for my sins. Lord, I agree. I'm a rebel. I've been a sinner all my life. I ask you to forgive me to cleanse me from all my wicked ways. Lord, change me. Make me a Christian this night. And I will follow you as you give me the strength. 
to find a church where I can fellowship, to read and study the Word of God every day. Lord, I will get baptized and publicly proclaim my new faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for making me a Christian. My friend, if you prayed that prayer, the heavens are now having angels rejoicing because one more soul has turned from the way that leads to hell to the way that leads home to heaven in Jesus Christ. Amen. And I believe that many have made the choice of, of yes. Jesus Christ right now watching this program and and you've you've uh, you made your mind up right now you're going to serve Jesus with all of your heart with all of your soul with all of your might